Welcome to Zero Page Homebrew, your best source for the newest Atari games. And we've got some newish ones today. Newish. We're going to be playing through. Non committal. <laughs> the newish. Uh, <laughs> they are part of the 10 line contest, basic 10 line contest for 2022. Not the, you know, advanced. No, it is very basic. Line contest. Very, very basic. <laughs> High level language. <laughs> um, <laughs> and Atari's here, and Darcy's here, and we're going to be playing through all the Atari 8 bit um, entries because there's entries from lots of different um, different systems. computers and systems. And that's because, why you had all the different systems on the, oh, well, that, on the intro screen? Yeah, that's their symbol that oh, I used. Okay. Um, but yes, that's uh, why I have all this. History time. Yum, yum, it yum, yum. Oh my oh, goodness. My goodness. He's Somebody's <laughs> going around in a circle. <laughs> Get that off. You gotta hit it. Oh! <laughs> he's, on, he's on it. Oh my god. And if you notice, and it's all timed up. Snacks, yeah. Everything's timed up now. The cat cam is timed up. So oh. all it's all in sync now. So you have to put the bell. Side so everyone can see him. Oh, I see. Did he get? You got one. You gotta do it again. You hit the bell, bud. I know nope. you're, you're smart slash stupid. <laughs> Just kidding. You're very oh, smart. Oh, poor kitties. Oh. Have it a little further. Across. Yeah. He has a hard time getting it. When it's close, he tends to push oh, it. There you go. There, good kitty. <laughs> so welcome everyone to the show. Uh, the games we're going to be playing today are Invasor, Burt, Chickens on the Freeway, Metrosync, Sigils, Spiky World, Super Zombie Apocalypse Simulator, Tune Up, and Zombie Apocalypse Simulator. We'll explain how Atari's a lefty. Uh, yes, mostly he is. Uh, but yeah, he is ringing it with his left there. Um, so we'll explain the rules of the competition. That's enough. That's enough. That's enough. Oh, no, I'm breaking them in half. Oh, okay. It's like, wow, he's, he's chowing down. Yeah. Uh, and actually four of these are written by Vitoko, um, who is in the chat. So you have any questions about programming the, uh, the, the games that you're going to see or in general or about the <clears throat> contest, Vitoko is on it. He knows all about it. Um, I want to thank all the Twitch subscribers who are scrolling down the side of the screen beside Darcy, floating in midair. Uh, 8 bit Swami, Alnafar, Alnafar, I'm Scar Coda, Atari Age, Big Dog, Susie BR, Pocock, Buck Owens, Chance, Don, Meow, Mao, Charles and Check, Charles Wheel and Chai, 5 Dino, Dan, if you see Daryl, uh, 1970 Direct Saul, Dr. Moo Cows, Emmy Dan, Fox Mulder, Great Offender, Ground Troop Warrior Rapper, Johnny WC, Carl G, Kev Kelly, Croco, Lauren TDZ, Mark Johannes, Mark Spacing, Melitari, Mick Muse, Mike Sol, Mike Latow, Miss Command, MK Smith, Mr. Zarnwu, Mr. Pick, Nathan Strum, Neo Media Op, Vocal Arm, Deco, Pacrab, VG Coog, R. Anchowitz, RC70, Rendered Ghost, Repentless VG, uh, Ricardo Pim, Rod Castler, Six Sweets, Smitty B, Spartan, Spiceware, Esther Mears, Toy Pig, The D Train Wash Man, Tiki Dan, KT, Man, Strike MD, Victor, M, X, Can't X. That's a long list. Probably one Just of the longest we've ever had. It keeps increasing. Thank you for supporting it. If you want to be on that list and make me say your name every show, twice a week, uh, you just subscribe. It's and free. And you do. And, and you do want to hear me say your name. Uh, it's free uh, with... Sorry, uh, make him say it. Make That's it. what you want yes, to do. You want to make have him to say, say it. it. <laughs> uh, just subscribe with Amazon Prime because it's free. Mm -hmm. Or if you want to pay money, you can do the other thing. Or you can follow us so you know that we are... Uh, broadcasting just like Eric, WN de la Sila. See, perfect timing. Great example. Thank you for following. Uh, some mail news and feedback. No, no mail. Uh, actually, didn't go out to the mailbox today, so there might be mail, but I don't think there is. Uh, but we can take a look at some news, Atari homebrew related news. Uh, so let's take a look at that. What do we have up first? Oh, the emulator for 7800 games, A7800, has been updated by uh, Revenge and Trevor. And it is now up to 5.0. The last release was about two years ago, and that was 4.0. I guess they don't, they just do big jumps. Four, all the way up to five. 
no 4.5. We're just going straight to 5. <laughs> and it's perfect because I've never seen any updates. No 4.01, 4.1. It's perfect right out the gate, <laughs> which is which is great. Um, so they've added a bunch of uh, things new in this release. Graphical register updates made mid-scan line are now display displayed mid-scan line. Well, that sounds good. Bank set, span, uh, bank set bank switching supported added. Pokey emulation quality improvements. That's a good thing. You always want the sound to be good. Improved light gun or emulation accuracy. appropriately bad. Appropriately bad. <laughs> Accurately bad. Accurately bad. <laughs> uh, hello back to Chile. Thank you for following. Uh, a A7800 dev and A7800 P dev machines target added, which display DMA usage per scan line. And if I scroll down here, uh, Revenge uh, posted a screenshot of uh, Attack of the Petski robots, and you can see how much usage um, the DMA is being used on that line. And the dark, I think. The lighter it is, the more heavy, and you can see the yellow lines showing it's right out of time. It can't mm. display any more in that line. It's used up all of the time it has, huh. which is, uh, oh, that doesn't make it any bigger. <laughs> it's like the act, actual size. <laughs> but that's, that's a very cool uh, option to show for uh, developers for making things. Balanced palette, brightness, and saturation. And the 7800 is an interesting beast where the color changes as it warms up, which is annoying to no end, as you can imagine, <laughs> for people developing on it. Uh, Pokey 800 added for non-bank super game of bank set formats. That's like the address. So it was like, <clears throat> like, was the graphics analog somehow? Like, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know exactly, but like yes. Somewhere along the way, there was something. <laughs> something changing the color, like a little dial like or something. Going, something changing expanding or, yeah, or contracting. Yeah. Yep, I don't know. I don't I don't know the details of it. Somebody can fill it in. Uh, OSX now, build now defaults to OpenGL video. BGFX video may not work on recent OSX releases, and that's the way it handles video. I think 7800 developers need to start taking advantage of the color warm up. Embrace it as a feature. That's right. It slowly changes the color rainbow. And then, and then, like when you reach the point in the game where the colors need to be different, then you instruct the player to reset the system and <laughs> that's and, right. Or Let or it cool put, down. Put the ice box. Put put a put the bag of ice on the keyboard or whatever. That's right. Colors are a suggestion on the seven eight hundred. <laughs> There's so much debate in the forums about colors on the seven eight hundred and uh -huh. screenshots and how it looks on a CRT versus the LCD. The picture that you showed it looked like. It looked like the, that face looks very, very convincing. Like yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm impressed with how yeah. it looks. Like nice purple shadowed on one side and good skin color tone. And like the character tone. looks like a three quarter yeah. top down. Like that's oh, it's great. Yeah. Well done game. Um, so you can uh, download it here off of its uh, where it resides on GitHub, and you can download for Linux, OS X, and Windows. And I ran it, and it yeah does uh, sound really good. Uh, it works really great. Um, the next um, piece of news is there's been an update to... Oh, might be another one, actually. Uh, to the new releases that are coming out from Atari Age. Albert posted a picture of the label stickers that go on the new games that he's, been, that he's releasing very soon that we're going to be playing on Atari Age Day 2022. Hmm. So we're going to be playing all these new releases and unboxing them and also talking with all the developers. Uh, I've reached out to all the developers. I've got a whole bunch of yeses, no nos yet. So that's good. They want to discuss their name, their, their games. Uh, so you can so see... So 41 games there. No, there's old games. These aren't oh, okay. all just new ones, thankfully. I would never... Last year's was nine hours long going through all the games. Um, it'll be less than that because I'll be speeding it up a bit more because that's way too long. <laughs> way too long. We're exhausted. <laughs> um, and there's a little bit less games. So we're still negotiating my appearance fee. Yeah, some people are holdouts like Phaser Cat Games. He's like, I don't know. Uh, I need a little bit more scratch to come on the show. I mean, uh, you know, yeah, he's so we're still working that out with him. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. 
I've received three of five boxes of labels thus far today. The other two are supposedly on the truck for delivery with the same carrier, but they won't show up until tomorrow. Uh, let's see if they showed up. Let's see what the reply is. Oh, it is. I have the end labels now. Ah. So see, uh, Unholy, Escape from the Castle. Mr. Yo-Yo. What is this? Popeye. Oh. Hmm. That's Nature's Spoon. Hmm. That's an interesting thing. Was Popeye in here? Oh, it was. Is that on the list of releases? I don't think so. Or was it? Am I going crazy? Wow, going. The cat is. Let's see. No, it wasn't. Hmm, interesting. Interesting. But very exciting, too. Uh, so these look like all the new ones. Ladybug, Hellway, Doggone, Dragon's Descend, Mr. Yo-Yo. And these are the older games that um, that he needs new labels for. And actually up here, he said, this is a mix of labels for new games as well as many older titles, so I will no longer have to print them myself. Plus, they have a nice glossy protective coating, which any labels I print myself do not have. There are labels for 41 different games in the above photo. I haven't received the end labels yet. Those must be the two outstanding packages. Outstanding. They all came out great. Can't wait to see these on the carts. So everybody will have to rebuy all these games because it's now a variant. Oh, this yeah. is the uh, label variant. The shiny label variant. Shiny label and variant. And the old ones are the Albert printed variant on his own label printer. So mm. everybody's going to have to buy them all over again. Yeah. Um, for the, for the uh, now. That sounds sensible. Now obsolete Albert label variant. And so those are limited edition now. <laughs> That's right. And yeah. they're completely, will be completely gone. Anyway. <laughs> just joking uh these all look great and they're all lined up nicely as well which sometimes can be a problem with end labels given there's not much margin for error yeah you have to give quite like look at that dangerous one with an outline around the outside because you always have to leave um what is that called it's like a red zone or red mm. anyway you have to leave an area it was bleed. easy for uh the bleed before for uh the bite before Christmas because it was red. So, uh, but... well, yeah. <laughs> bleed. Yes. Uh, I got it before you mentioned it, but yeah, it's called bleed and you can't put anything in, uh, important in the bleed zone yeah, because yeah. it could be cut at any point. So either it's, it's usually solid there or blank. Yeah. 20 years from now, will they still sh show a difference enough to tell them apart? Will Wada note how to grade them differently? Oh my God. That whole thing. Not, I'm not a, I'm not a fan <laughs> of putting games in boxes and grading them. <laughs> um, putting games in boxes to protect them, yes, but that whole grading thing. Uh, okay, so let's get to what the contest is all about that we're going to be playing the games today about. Um, so, oh, that's way too big. There we go. So it's a ba basic ten liner uh, contest. Is that, is that trash eighty? Uh, yeah, I believe there? the Trash 80 is a mm. part of it. Um, pretty much any system, I believe, that had a base, basic uh. basic interpreter. Uh. So uh, that one, mm -hmm. uh, very nice. And we'll see uh, the number of entries as well. So maybe somebody put in uh, TRS-80 or one of What's the variants. What's the blue keyboard with the tape deck built in? Uh, is that a dragon... Uh, I'm not familiar. There's a lot of European ones. It's that, just like that's the it's best. Super cool. That's the best keyboard for sure. It's got like a Look full keyboard. It's got there. a number pad. It's got arrow keys. It's got a and play rewind. A data deck. That's... There is a lack of Atari there. Is... Yes, there is. <gasps> it's terrible. Uh, there's C64. Um, there is a C... Armstrad CPC 464. Is that the? <laughs> oh, that that must that be one. that one. Uh, Sinclair, ZX Spectrum, ZX Spectrum. Um, so let's scroll down to English, which I'm better at reading than a German. So legal systems, all 8-bit computer systems. So anything that runs as an 8-bit and I guess has basic interpreter, of course. Uh, authorized basic dialects, all line-oriented basic dialects are allowed with a restriction in the category uh, PUR80. Pure 80. Pure 80. Uh, so these are the categories, uh, program a game with 10 lines, 
maximum 80 characters per logical line. Uh, so it'd be 800 characters total. But, oh, so you can I see. 10 so, lines. Oh, so the category per 80 and per 120. And I'm per sure PUR is a German abbreviation, not anything to do with English. Um, and then extreme 256. So okay. if we go up to the German, I don't see anything that says P-U-R anywhere. So I don't know what it stands for. Uh, uh, in this category, only factory built-in basic variants are allowed, not ones that you load off a cassette or a cartridge, oh, okay. I'm guessing, because there are some uh, systems where you had to put in a cartridge after the fact. Like packages or whatever? Yeah, that weren't that didn't have a basic ROM mm. uh, on the board. Mm. Okay, I right. understand now. Yeah. Yep, yep. Uh, and then pure, pure, one, pure 120, 120 characters to extreme 256. What does abbreviations allowed mean? Um, let's say you wanted to use the word, the command print. Mm -hmm. And on, say, the Commodore, it's some of the abbreviations were like P, and then you do a shift, and it did a little kind oh, of okay. character so you could get it down to two uh two characters instead of the five with print oh there you go and uh most basics have a question, question mark, mark. so that will save you a lot of characters, characters. Yeah, yeah so abbreviations are allowed in everything and then category 64 basic is very basic <laughs> uh it is <laughs> well we'll talk about that later <laughs> category shao Program a 10 lines, max 256 characters per a logical line of briefing systems are allowed. Program can be a demo, a tool, or an application. So base, generally the contest is a games-oriented okay. um, gotcha. uh, yeah. contest. And this one, Xiao, is you can make anything, not just not just games. But ultimately, like it's how impressed are people by it. So if you yeah. do something that's like a label maker, and somebody else does something <laughs> like better a full than screen that, awesome demo with yeah. music, then, uh, yeah. label maker is gonna sit by the wayside, maybe. Yeah. Uh, oh, Apple II would expand question mark to print when you listed the program. So I'm not sure how you would do that in terms of rules. Yeah, because don't list the program. Just. <laughs> type it in, take a screenshot of what you typed in, <laughs> and never list it. <laughs> I don't know. That's interesting. Uh, there's fifth category. Yes. Uh, I was going to get to that. Or uh, retroactively count print as only one character. Yeah, that's what they'd have to do. Oh, my. Submitted programs that Something's do not with comply with the rules are summarized in the wild category. So there is a category where you can go over the 256. Or more than 10 lines. Does that just... Can you go over 10 lines? Because it says you... With the rules summarized, yeah, in the wild... Are summarized in the wild category. So any program made at any time, at any length? Interesting. Uh, loading of data or program parts for mass storage is not allowed. So what is in the program? That's all you get. 10 lines must not contain any machine programs, so no pokes or peaks. Oh, pokes are allowed, uh, but no peaking. <laughs> uh, programs must be compiled. Source must be still submitted. So you can compile it. You don't have to run it in basic. It could be machine language. All code must be visible in the listing. Self-modifying code or hidden initializations are not allowed. Um, so, mm, interesting. SYS? Well, uh, let's see. Uh, I don't know. It only says pokes. Machine, uh, no, no machine programs. So SYS is kind of a machine program. I don't know. Uh, this doesn't go into super detail. Deadlines for submission, March 26th. So it's passed now. Award ceremony, April 9th, so it's coming up in about a week. Uh, Public's Choice Special Award, give hearts to your favorite ones. Uh, the program must be submitted on disc or tape image appropriate for the system. Uh, so an image, not an actual disc or tape. Program must be listable. Here we go. The list command must produce a readable program listing. Doesn't say about expansion of shortcuts. I don't know. Include the following zip file, blah, blah, blah. Okay, that's about submission. And then where to send it to. Um, so 
here is the breakdown of all the games. Uh, Vitoko posted this. So here's the categories, 81, 22, 56, uh, Shao, Wild, Total. So it says there were a total of 78. He says 79. Not sure where the discrepancy is. And the ones we're going to be playing today, Atari, uh, we're going to be playing Atari 8-bit uh, games today. So there were four in the 80, three in the 120, and two in the 256 for a total of nine. Um, so systems submitted, there are Amstrad CPC, Apple II, Apple IIe, Atari 2600, Atari 800XL, BBC Micro, Commodore 128, a bunch of Commodores, uh, Mattel Aquarius, MSXs, Auric Atmos. Yeah, he's a little bit fuzzier today. Eh? Yeah. Um, Sharp, Sinclair, Tandy. Oh, so Tandy Coco and T uh, TRS-80. And Texas Instrument, 994A, Videotron TV, Computer, 64. Never heard of that one. So a total of 3980s, 13 120s, 15, 256, 5 uh, Shows, and 6 Wilds. Hmm. But no Wilds uh, today that we're going to be playing, and no Shows either. Uh, facts or information. There are entries for 22 platforms. That's amazing. Half the entries are pure, pure R80. So I think people really want to challenge themselves to make the best in the smallest. Um, and that's the same with like 4K games on the 2600. The platform with the most entries is Sinclair ZX Spectrum. Uh, the brand with the most entries is Commodore 21. Atari XL XE has only nine entries. So I'm guessing he was expecting more. Vitoko submitted four out of the nine, so almost half. And Vitoko posted for everyone to download uh, in the thread about the uh, the basic 10-liner contest in the Atari Age forums. If you haven't noticed, I've uploaded my 10-liners page, an ATR containing this year's compilation of Atari XLXE games. But if you have noticed, I'll tell you I've updated it to solve some problems in the menu. Anyway, I'm attaching the ATR here. The ATR contains all nine entries, plus NTSC versions for three of them, plus docs for all you in the set. Oh, thank you for following Shadrat. Thank you. Uh, remember to boot it with your basic cartridge or basic ROM enabled. So that's what we're going to be uh, playing the games off of, because he's organized it very nicely on a menu system. Thank you so much, Fitoko, uh, for doing that uh, a couple days ago. And there's our thing right there. Blah. Okay, so I think that's everything. So we're going to get into the first game. And the order I post there is not exactly the order we're going to play it, but it's kind of the order. So the first one in is Invasor. Um, this is by Victor Pareta, also known as Vitoko, who is in the chat. So if you have any questions about the games he made, um, then uh, we will take a look at that. Or, or uh, games made, you can ask him. So let's actually take a look. He does a very great breakdown of his games. He includes the source code and he includes... Uh, uh, it's not... The order is not great there. That is the entries order. Okay. Well, I'm going to be doing it a little differently. Yeah, you better be sorry you're late. See, Darcy's late too. He just got here. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> Invasor by Victor Pratt. This is a little game for blah, blah, blah. The program fits in the extreme 256 categories written, written using Fast Basic. Um, one invader, one button, one shoot, one life. Keep the earth safe from a lot of single invaders. Uh, when the title screen appears, press start. Well, I'll read this out um, when we uh, actually play the game. I was connected live to the Zero Page Homebrew show some months ago during the presentation of some new eight Atari 8-bit homebrew games. One of the games was Invader, a 2021 port for the Atari 8 XLXE by Ken Jennings of a game for the C64 by Darren Fold in 2019. Um, so we played um, Invader for Atari XLXE on the show, and it was a lot of fun. And um, Vitoko saw this and he's like, oh, I can make that in 10 lines. Uh, so he talks a lot about how he makes the game, which is really great. There's the game right here. That's the wow. whole game in the 10 lines right there. 
Uh, it's actually uh, a, even s s squished down. I don't see any line numbers, <laughs> uh, but I'm guessing they're in there somewhere. Um, so here is, oh, so you can peek and poke because I see some pokes there. Did I see a poke? There's a poke at the right. Oh, there it is. Oh, there's yeah. a poke and there's a, a D peak. I'm not familiar with Atari basic. Um, so he does great, uh, explanation of the game. He breaks it down line by line and expands it so you can understand what's going on in it. Eight lines only. Fat basic does not lose line numbers. No go to. Oh, interesting. Um, so it must have um, not numbers, but uh, like an indicator of like go like go to this, or it's maybe it's structured so you don't use ever use go you to have return. Um, well, actually, we can look here. Yeah, how do you call like, like they'll be doing repeats, right? Go, it'll be like doing a loop. It must have loops. No labels either. It just must, it just must, you have to keep track of your repeats, I guess. It's like repeat, and then when it's finished, it goes back up to the repeat, or like repeat until. Yeah, no there are procedures. Yeah. No, there are procedures. Yeah, there's like next, there's if statements. So you can, you can structure it so if the game is over, mm -hmm. return to the top and start again. Or... If you can make a almost a, a loop by by making an impossible breakout uh, statement, like right at the end of your program, and it would go right back at the top. If zero equals one, then exit. <laughs> or if if one if one equals one, go back up to the top. Something like that, right? Um, so lots of if if else and if end and else and uh, so so you can see as it breaks it out, it's quite a big program but he's able to compress it right down into tiny lines of crazy code. Let me see if I can, like, you can see there's, there's um, graphics being represented as symbols uh. because if you, you could read the ASCII and convert that into graphics, right? Right. And because an ASCII represents zero to 255 and that can represent an eight bit uh, line of graphics or a byte of graphics, right? Each of those represents a byte of graphics. Anyway, so let's get into the game now and play it. Boom. And it's Atari 8-bit day. So let's put up the Atari 8-bit sign. Have you seen those before? No. no it's, <laughs> it's cool. Got those a little while ago. Okay, so if you can pick up the joystick, please. Oh, scary uh, cat! We're going to play Invaser in PSC, <clears throat> which is five. Apparently that uh, color there is what's happening at the, on the computer at the store. <laughs> the, the other color we just saw? That's about, yeah, we got oh. a blue screen. That's so never good. That go in. Did you tell them, uh, have you tried uh, turning it off and on again? Yes, <laughs> I, I, I did. I got them to try that. So we'll do one player first. Uh, so shoot the thing, don't die. It's coming to get you. So when you shoot your uh, bullet, you reverse direction. Oh. Woohoo! Oh. You got it. So let me read about oh, this man. game. Oh, I missed that. It's coming. It's coming for you. It's getting closer. That's right. I'm getting closer. It well, is. Except that time, which was astounding. Awkward. This fits in ten lines. Like, oh. look at the mountains. Like, just the graphics themselves. Um, the mountains. The graphics the are stars. Oh, so let's read about how to play it. What? 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 It's a different page. Oh, there we go. 
Uh, in single player mo mode, your cannon moves from side to side, bouncing on the edges. A uh, spaceship will appear from, uh, from one side at the top. Each time it reaches the other side, it will descend one step and cross back over to the other side. You can change move change the moving direction by shooting. Shoot your, with your cannon to destroy the ship. If you think your shot won't reach the invader, you can shoot again only if your bullet has traveled a portion of the space. Uh, when you have success, another ship will appear two steps higher. Oh, they're getting faster now. Nice. Uh, each time you hit and destroy an invader, your score will increase. The higher is the ship, the higher they earn points. If you hit at the top, you will get a bonus. So you've got 3,000... 320. And it has a high score, too. That's amazing! And this is in the uh, 256 category, so you have more... Oh, God! Oh, God! Oh, one more! Oh, it only goes back up a little bit. Oh, you're getting it up then. There you go. One of those games uh, where the worse you do, the worse it is for you. <laughs> oh, it's faster. And it's great because this game actually gets harder and harder as it goes as well. It's not the same thing over and over again. Oh, God. Last chance. <sighs> there are only eight stars on the screen at a time. Is there? Looks like so much more. It's because they're fading in and out, I'm guessing. Oh, no. And that squish. Game over. 4,400. Pretty good. Pretty good. So, let's play uh, the two-player game. I think this says with the select key. Okay. We have separate scores? Yes. Okay. So it's kind of co-op, but all this at the same time. Oh, it's going to hit him and then I shot again. <laughs> co-op, but competitive. So we can't destroy each other, but we can just do better than each other. Oh! But it's co-op in the fact that we are helping each other by keeping the alien at bay. And we have two shots compared to... Oh, God. That was quite a speed increase. Oh! Ah! And it's challenging because you're always moving, and you're moving one way or the other, so you have to c constantly reevaluate your timing, and it's getting lower at the same time. Oh, it's very fast now. My God, it gets fast. It's uh, somehow we did worse, or did we do worse? <laughs> no, no. The so total combined score is is better. better. Yeah. Yeah. Any chance of an at fifty two hundred conversion? Uh, does fifty two hundred at basic? <laughs> if oh no, I mean you could just take how the, different is it system to system? Like how much do you have to change? Uh, the joysticks you have to change. <laughs> Because the 5200 had analog mm. joysticks rather than digital joysticks. But they and have I, just a button for this game. But, I, but oh, generally, speaking, generally speaking, that would, would make be. it a lot easier mm -hmm. because it's just a button rather than having to read the joysticks. Um, memory, 
uh, the way it handles memory is a little bit different because it had less memory than some of the computer systems, but structurally it's the same system. It's just an altered Atari 8-bit system. Uh, the primary fire button is one part of the controller that doesn't change. Well, there you go. Uh, yeah, Phaser Cat Games is the person to ask about that. He's the 5200 expert here. Uh, this will be compiled for the 5200 with a new version of Fast Basic. Oh, beta in the Atari Age forums. There we go. Oh, the game moves the base. What? Uh, so, fun game. We played that before uh, in a different format on the show. Um, this is astounding. And it looks really good. Yeah. yeah. Like, the graphics are really good. The gameplay is solid. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it increases in difficulty as well, which is awesome. And it has high scores and two-player and single-player. It's unbelievable. Um, so, let's go on to game number two, which is... Get to my notes. Um, yeah, it would have been easier to do it in the order. Which is Bert, which is also by Vitoko. Let's reboot. Is it going to work? Is it going to take me back to the menu? Let's see. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Not sure. Nope, it didn't. But I can remedy that. Boom. And see if anybody can figure out what game this is supposed to be. <laughs> um, so let's read about oh are you able to move no oh you can okay oh yeah that last game only uses the fire button the the bases automatically move sorry I didn't I don't know if I made that clear the, they are constantly going back and forth, and if they hit something, they turn around. And if you hit the button to fire, they also turn around. Okay, so this is uh, oh. by Victor Parada, uh, also known as Vitoko. Uh oh. In the chat. Uh -oh. oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't learn. Bert has to change the color of the five pyramids to green. But Bally. Bali? Bali tries to make him fail the mission. Play the game. Press fire to start a new game. Game instructions. Turn the joystick to for controller 45 degrees clockwise in order to handle with the red button centered at the top, which Darcy has done. Move through the spots of the pyramid, changing their color to green. Avoid the ball as it'll take, it will take one try, as well as if you fall out of the pyramid. When you complete a pyramid, you have the next. have to continue with the next one. There are five pyramids. And in some of them, you have to jump on the spot multiple times. You only have three tries to change the color of all the pyramids. You win the game when you when all the pyramids are converted to green. So this game ah! actually has an end to it. Uh, yeah, no score in this one. If you wanted a score, this would be like, how many pyramids did you complete? What level did you get to? So if you complete all five pyramids, you have won the game. And you'd have to mentally keep track of which pyramid you're on because I don't think it tells you. I think that one is the the how many lives you have left. Looks like a lives counter. Yeah, very good graphics. Like the pyramid is great, and this one is a uh, part. Let's see which one. Oh, it doesn't say on this. Oh page. no how long this one is. Let me go to the bigger page. Oh, no, what? You have one life left. Oh, it flips back and forth. Uh -oh. oh, it's for the best. <laughs> <laughs> so which one did you... Is that the second pyramid you made it to? Uh, I was on the third pyramid. Third pyramid. Oh, yeah. keep going. Try again. Where is it? Oh, it's the wrong page. There we go. No, get out of here. Oh. Games list.
Where is the Bert? Uh, there we go. Okay, so ah. this was entered in... Well, that's the same page it took me to. Uh, PUR 120 category. Language Fast Basic 4.5.1. No! Oh, what pyramid was this? Number My two. turn. Number two? Mm hmm. I failed to learn. <laughs> I failed to learn. Yeah, you want to stay away from the top when, or at least... Yeah, yeah, you got to stay away from the top when it's... Or at least the top two. The top one is actually a safe zone, so... The top, the very top is, but... Yeah. Uh, but not... Yeah, that's, the th that's what I meant when I said I failed to learn. Because <laughs> you kept going there? I kept doing what you almost did there, which is going into the danger zone when the ball was scheduled to return. <laughs> It was on. It was on time. Ah! Oh my god. I almost killed myself there. So this one is... Don't want to repeat. Ah! Nope. Don't go near there. Let's do a bit of cleanup here. Oh god. Ball moves fast now. There you go. Oh gosh. <laughs> <laughs> the purple guy is moving faster now, so. Okay, so you I have to change green. them all to green. Oh God! Did it, no, it didn't re. Oh, resets the resets whole level. The level. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Boo! Oh God! No! I mean, a good tactic is to kind of ah! Uh, <laughs> Level four. You finally get all the audio sync stuff worked down. For some reason, my browser started going out of sync on its own. It's never done it before last week. Oh, yeah, sorry that's, about that. that seems very impressive for uh, 10 lines. This? Oh, my God. Yeah. Incredible. And it's less, less characters than the last game we played. This is a 120. The last one was 256. So... I mean, the last one I had more graphics, and it had two players, so I can... Oh my god, I almost died. That's really the only thing you really need to worry about in this one, is don't stay near the top. You can avoid that guy fairly easily by just... Oh, what side of the pyramid is he on? Okay, yeah, yeah. done. And just hang out on the opposite side. Because yeah. he can never hop two over, so he doesn't turn into a snake. Like in the full game. <laughs> yep. But I was taking too many risks last game. There we go. Oh, this is the one where it changes back. Ugh. I gotta cut the outliers. Oh! Uh, you got him! Joystick! Joystick issues. No joy from that stick. Nope, none at all. Really? Okay. <laughs> Can I get that oh, no! No! Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Badness. Good times. <laughs> Thank you.
Oh, <laughs> I thought he was going to move faster. I, I, know, I, know. I need to complete all five levels. I just need to. Go up. Three point six. Are they giving me scores <laughs> based on how far I got? I'm not quite sure I get it. Come on. This only registers left, right, up, or down, which is as it should. It doesn't register. Um, go! Um, whoa! Oh. I always mess this one up. I bet there's an optimal pattern for this one. Which I would definitely not do. That one wasn't too bad. Yeah. It wasn't bad. It starts over. That's the worst part of this. <laughs> that it starts over. I think it's appropriate that it starts over, though. It is. Because it is. the challenge... Because that's the challenge. Yeah. Is that you can't... Yeah. Squeaky noises. Let's get that one. Let's do this. <gasps> no. No. On this level. Oh god. <laughs> okay, this is level five, right? I think. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. I have to turn them green. I think it's low. Still have two lives left. Oh. oh, this one cycles through. It doesn't go back, it resets it when you go from green. Wait. To, what other one on did green, that too? What's that? One other one did that too. It would turn it off and on, but this one is three cycles through. Yeah, the, though, yeah, lots of them do the cycling on, but this yeah. one cycles all the way back <gasps> to the beginning. Uh, fudge sickle! <laughs> yes. It does. Oh, oh my god. No! <laughs> no! Okay, we're moving on. Yeah. <laughs> I know I can do it, but today's not that day. <laughs> uh, so the next game, we'll just stand this screen, uh, is Metro Sync by Eric Henneck. Henneke? Eric Henneke? Hopefully I'm saying your name right. Um, these games have a fantastic rage per line ratio. <laughs> it does. <laughs> they are very rageful. And uh, I believe Eric followed the show. Uh, so uh, he's watching if he wants to talk about the game. So objective, in the virtual future, life is dominated by a never ending quest to acquire as many experience tokens as possible, since these tokens are the only way for people to experience anything of interest in the virtual world. They are the I single remaining source uh, uh -oh. for the spice of life. Behind the scenes, these experience tokens are exchanged via a complex network known as MetroSync. Deep within the cogs of MetroSync, your avatar must navigate a mesh of synchros, in interconnecting paths, redirecting routers to locate no. a secure new experience token. So it's kind of like Frogger? Kind of Froggerish, like the log part of Frogger. Uh -oh. No, I, I'm, I'm failing. So the blue ones reverse. Uh oh. Oh, you're good. You're good. Just need to hop on a white one. Oh no! Oh, that's awesome. Um. Never yielding, no. in a perpetual state of chaotic motion, the Metro Sync is an intimidating, pulsing vortex of energy, always working to grind up and dispose your vulnerable avatar. Your mission is very straightforward. Oh, oh, oh. What? If you go on, they change, 
direction if you go on a blue one. That's what I said. I didn't listen to you. <laughs> Just like Tanya. I say things, and then she says it, like, moments later, and I'm like, I just said that! Terrible. This must be frustrating for you. <laughs> Incredibly! Nice! Oh, yeah, I have to go down now. Oh, and now they're... Now they're blue and white on the interconnecting ones, which will change the direction. Or not change the direction. Interesting. Uh, your mission is very straightforward. Navigate the metro sync by guiding your avatar through the internet, paths, and synchros to secure as many spirit tokens as possible before your life energy is depleted. Uh, be forewarned that the metro sync will be incessantly working to cleanse itself by grinding up your avatar and jettisoning it off the grid in short order. When your avatar is expelled off either side of the metro sync grid, you will lose an entire unit of life energy, must re-enter oh, no. the grid and repeat your quest. Don't do it that way. That's the wrong way. <laughs> In your journey... Is the game over? Press the button. There you go. Oh, so there's a countdown at the top? For time? What is that? Double moves. Oh, yeah, but no! not intentionally. Can you re reverse it by pressing the button? Um, no. In your journey, you also encounter no! redirector routers. The redirection routers can be both your best allies as well as your worst enemies. For when your avatar engages a redirection router, all the motion of the metro sync immediately reverses. You can use this to your advantage as a well to way to influence the flow of the metro sync, or you can be manhandled and expelled, swept up in a, motion, a moment of redirection gone afoul. Oh, can you go back? Somebody says. Yes. Okay, so you can. Oh my gosh. Yeah, unfortunately, on this, uh, I've got to go up. Yeah, but I, I'm bad with the joystick apparently because I pushed. You should that. be able to hold it. You do, but then you, then you do double, double jumps, and that's what's been happening. Yeah, this. there's no, no room for debouncing, in these games. <laughs> it's only time for movement. Gameplay: Your avatar will start at the bottom of the Metro Sync grid, and the first experience token will appear somewhere at the top of the grid. Seek the fastest path to secure the experience token on the opposite side of the metro sink since your life energy, denoted by the energy bar at the top of the screen, will constantly be trickling away. But you must be cautious in your journey as well, because if you are careless and allow your avatar to be expelled off the each side of the grid, you'll lose an entire unit of life energy and be forced to repeat your efforts from the original entry point. If you're successful in traversing the grid and you secure the experience token, a new token will appear at the bottom of the grid. Now you must navigate downward through the metro sink once again in pursuit of the next token. And on it goes. Oh, so you made it to the bottom again? Yeah. And the insatiable quest for experience tokens will continue indefinitely until your life energy is exhausted. Scoring one point for each experience token secured. Controls, use the joystick. Yep, yep. Left or right movement is achieved by writing in the ever map. Okay, when this game is over, press the button. Okay, so I think we, we did get it all. Hey, Eric. Uh, Stupid pop-ups. The blue represents redirection routers. That's the only way to reverse, whether you want to or not. Okay, so you can't manually reverse. But at least they're, they're patterned. So that... So do you just have to sync up with it? Or did you have to push up? You have to push up. And you have to push up top. before you get to the thing. And then the you top. push up at the top. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Just like moving on to any of the, the bits. Okay. Oh. 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 So you have to go on a blue. No, I... You meant... could have gone down on a blue and it would reverse course. And you'd go over to the right-hand one. Yeah, but it was going the wrong way. It was going that way at the time. So I went up, but I went into the wrong one uh, at the top. Yep. Um, yep. Because they're they're mostly turnarounds now. And I did. No, nope, you can go on a blue one. Down below, and it'll reverse going that way. Uh, yeah, that's right. No, oh, no. It's the it's the my inability to uh, <laughs> press the button. <laughs> the right time or push down at the right foot anyways okay skills are lacking this is, <laughs> this is what i'm saying the skills they're skills lacking. they are lacking 
Oh, double yep. movement. Oh, no. It can be so precise. Yep. Which is, like, like good. That's that's where the skill in the game is. I mean, you got to figure out where to go, but you also have to, like, be on the ball. Yeah. Be on the pipe. Ah, down. Yep. Sometimes there's rescue. Yep. Up. Up. Oh, oh, no. Yeah. Reverse course. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. The double. Ah, down. No. <laughs> Fighting with the controls. <laughs> Yay! Yeah. A point! I mean, I was never a fan of Frogger. I like this better than Frogger. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Yeah! Yay! Another point! Oh. Oh, God. Oh, you gotta go down. No. You just go reverse. What? I went on the wrong one. Oh, way. yeah, yeah. Yeah, you could go either. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. There's always a way to reverse it, which is good. Yeah. So you're never stuck no matter which one you're on. It's yeah, always yeah, fun. You just good. have to yeah. make sure you go on the right if one. If there's a path, you're not stuck. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, oh, it's, it's getting harder. <laughs> yes, you can use that quote. Better than better Frogger. Than Put that in the box. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this one. Oh my god. Okay. I want to go reverse. And then I want to go reverse again. Then it doesn't matter. Oh god. Oh god. Oh, oh. Go back up. Okay, I want to go now. Yeah. yeah, it's getting crazy. My my eyes are going a bit buggy now. Yeah, someone said that earlier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thrust. Oh, I died. Yeah, it because it just turns into crazy patterns. No. Oh boy. It's like. When you're heading towards the thing you want, it's never too early to press up. You just gotta rem you just gotta time the, the like off. letting off. Yeah. Yes, that's the key. It does look like you can go off as yeah. soon as you hear the beep. It, yeah. You have a bit of time. Oh god! Oh, did I run out of time? Oh. Oh. No. oh. Okay. So do you get more time when you complete? I want to see this I I didn't again. See the, oh, is that's What's a that timer S? at the top? What is that S at the bottom? Uh, this is a zero. Oh, it's a zero. <laughs> but at... it does look like an S. I thought it was a coin when I yeah, first saw it. Yeah, it looks like a coin yeah, with an S Yeah, it's definitely a zero. It. Yeah, yeah, it's a zero. And that thing at the top is it's not going... lives, it's time. Yeah, yeah, that oh, must be Oh, and it. do you gain time? Well, do a thing oh. and I'll tell you. It doesn't help when you die. Yeah. I just down. lost one. Yeah. But it just went down and you hadn't lost one. Okay. So it is... And the time only ticks when you're playing, I think. Oh, no. And you lose one when you die. Okay. So you'd have to gain a couple when you complete it successfully. Ah, uh, doubled! It's definitely time and death. When you die, you lose one, but also it seems to go down with time. No, no right. you didn't gain any. So really, you're trying to get as many points in the time Oh, and you it just have. went down while you were waiting at the bottom, too. I don't yeah. know. No, I mean, you hadn't started moving. Oh, yeah, yeah. I had said that I don't think it goes down when you're before you start. But. Okay, so it gives vision already disturbed. <laughs> disturbed vision. <laughs> yeah, it's it's uh, it's a really innovative game. Yeah. Is, is this uh, an original game, uh, Eric? Is it? Eric, yeah. It depletes based on time, but if you get ejected off the screen, you lose an entire unit at once. Okay. So it's both lives and and time, which is brutal. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
So there is, again, an end to the game. Like, it's like when you play... Uh, now you want to double. Yeah, that's the time you want to double. Yeah. It's like playing Gauntlet. It's like you're going to die. You cannot complete the game in one quarter. As far as I know, I don't know if you can, because <laughs> your health constantly goes down all the time. Yes, original, obviously influenced by the logs on Frogger. It's great. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a great use of um, putting into this competition for this type of game. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because visually, you only need a couple things. I don't even know if those are graphics. Are those look like characters because they're moving like a character at a time. Okay. So you don't even need graphics. And it's just um, patterns yeah. and movement. Yeah, very, very innovative. So great job. Yeah. There you go. Let's see what's next. On our list of games. That was only 80 characters. Oh, it was 80? Fine. Sorry. That's great. So it was in the smallest um, category. So Sigils is next. Number 12. And this is a 256. Let me see it right here. Very nice labeling by Vitoko. <laughs> is it Happy Computer or Mappy Computer? I bet it's Happy. Okay. But it could be Mappy. It's funny they didn't. I would never have guessed it. Mappy if it wasn't for Mappy. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it's not really a word. That word only exists in uh, in uh, that game, I think. Sigils by Kim Slauson, also known as uh, OX Coffee, OXC zero F F E E, on the Atari Age forums. Um, so this is a two hundred and fifty six. So we're going to start on the lowest level. Oh, happy. I thought these were not allowed. What? 256? Let's go enter. So, uh, the basics are you must connect all the dots without leaving one behind. You have to connect all of them. Extended basic. Uh, maybe Sigils was in the uh, wild category. I don't think it was, no. So, no. Okay. It'll be a little bit tricky here. Mm -hmm. I this, the link is mislabeled. Oh, I repeated it. Created twice. a new. Uh, well done! Sigil. Good. Sigil. Oh, job. hey, that's the name. Never mind. <laughs> There we go. Ooh, sunglasses. Ah. Like, are they supposed to? Is there only one way to complete it? Is that what they're implying? Uh, they're not. I don't know if there's... Maybe. You do have to do a line, but I don't know if... I don't know if the way I did the first one was the only way to it's do probably it. Probably a couple variations. Actually, I know it wasn't because when I went across this way, I had shortened some of that, and you could have gone down and done mm. it. This way, it's connect the dots, but more interesting. You form symbols, sigils, as you play. Also, there are gratuitous crashing noises. Pretty quiet output, actually, from my eight bit machine. Uh, to play, use the joystick to move from dot to dot, drawing a line as you go. The pitch of the sound is inversely proportional to the length of the line. Is it actually making sounds? I don't know. It's blipping there for a second. I don't know what that blip is. Metrosync to use only pure Atari Basic. Oh, this one's big. Uh, use the joystick to move from dot to dot, drawing a line as you go. The pitch of the sound is inversely proportional to the length of the line, like stretching a rubber band. If you get stuck or just want to retry a level, push fire. To get back to the main menu, hit reset. This also applies to level editor. Wait, did you say level editor? Yes, Virginia, there is a level editor. When you master all of the included levels, have fun making your own. Draw dots until you're ready to play, then hold down the fire button for more than a second. Screen will flash, indicating you're ready to play your homemade level. If you get stuck or just want to retry your creation, push fire. 
Sigils was developed on a MacBook Pro and tested using Atari 800 Mac X. Uh, my childhood, oh yeah, I can hear. It's just really quiet. Um, da, 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 source code. Readable listing with comments. So they included some uh, commented uh, readable listing. It looks huge. But then when you look at the basic, they compact it down like to almost nothing. It's amazing all the shortcuts you can do. <clears throat> Patoko, a Turbo Basic XL is based on Atari Basic, but with language extensions and faster, it runs almost all Atari Basic programs do not stick to memory. Oh, this one using Turbo Basic XL, which is allowed for PUR 120 and Extreme 256. So on the 80 version, you have to use the built-in basic, but on the higher ones, you can use any basic. That's what Fitoko is implying, or uh, Eric's implying. Oh, you did it! Yeah, I recall it saying something about, yeah, you can only use basic built on in. 80. Mm. And I think the 120 and the other one didn't have that thing saying you can only oh, use that. Oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't notice that it didn't have that. That makes sense now. Yeah. Oh, Eric confirmed. P PUR80 category is limited to a only Atari Basic. So why is it called PUR? Is that pure? Uh, is it an abbreviation? Is it a, a German word that is not translating well? Or I'm not quite sure. Well, it looks like patterns over and over again. It just looks like, like a outside <laughs> and say, don't be drawing those on the show. <laughs> then the Germans can't see it. <laughs> Literally, they, they're not allowed to see it. <laughs> it's not not allowed. It's, yeah. yeah, games no, with swastikas are banned in it's Germany. It's not about. <laughs> it's not about the rules. It's about that like like literally can't see it like it's just just like <laughs> they're this just blurry it's all out, blurry yeah, yeah. The, their vision gets uh how blurry the m more impressive metrosync becomes yes yeah that's for sure so what which one is this is this uh this was 256 yeah metrosync is super this looks super like a frog impressive. or a guy with his side. hands up with standing on the leg a frog. He's oh yeah, yeah 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 it does look like a frog uh 45 degree angle well this one Kinda looks like a key. <laughs> yeah, the audio is super quiet. Like I can barely hear it and it's cranked up. Why is that? Not even set properly. <laughs> Not kinda. I'm pretty sure that's a key. Yeah. <laughs> This is a box. Okay. Ooh, not as simple as it first appears, actually, this one. I didn't do the outside. Nope. You're going to have to go one direction and end up... Like, if you go along right to the top, you're going to have to end it on the one just below you. Mm hmm. Hmm. Oh, I got it. That wasn't the one way I was going to do it, but I think... I don't know this, if this is right. This is just as valid. I was just going to start it earlier doing this box thing. Maybe my way wouldn't have worked. I've already solved it in my head, Jesse says. Yep, very cool. It's like a cross on its side. Or a C. Or a very stylized C. Yep. I did see the cross first, though. <laughs> and this is a teddy bear or a skull. Yeah, easy. It's one of those games where uh, the audience can do their do participation as well by kind of tracing it on their screen. The bigger ones are a lot harder. Oh, I would have gone the inside, but that works too. Some sort of deer. Well or done. Animal. Skull. It's the dragon. It's the dead dragon from adventure with his head up. Some of these, once you start, it's like, well, 
I have to go there. Well, I have to go there now. It kind of forces you for part of it, like that whole part. And then, uh, and it's, uh, you have to think about this part. Such a uh, fun, clever, small game. Now, did you ever type in programs for your TRS-80? Yeah. Yeah. And they're all basic programs usually. So I remember, you know, buying the magazines, probably talked about this last time, we played Vitoko's. We, last time we played the 10-liner, we played every single game of Vitoko's that he has entered in for the past X years. So we had, so we were able to catch up. So this year we can play all the other people's. Nice. You did it! But I had a Commodore, we both had Commodore 64s and you had a TRS-80 before that. Now, would you save your typed in games to cassette on your TRS-80? I never, I only think I typed in one uh, game that was anything notable. Yeah. And I believe it ended in tears when <laughs> uh, there was a complete failure to, uh, <laughs> to save. save it. Yeah. Oh no. Did you save it and it just didn't save properly and, and you tried to load it and it's like, oh, it's not there. I remember the tears, but not what caused them. <laughs> That seems like the most likely thing because you would just keep trying. Like you wouldn't know whether it's saved properly. No, you could verify, couldn't you? Like you could go back and go, does this program on tape match the one in base in memory? Or you just like, good luck. I hope it's saved. Yeah, I definitely didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> uh, I didn't know all the steps that I needed beforehand. I can yeah. say that for sure. Yeah. But also uh, I... I didn't super value typing in the code that someone else yeah. did. I should have because I yeah. would have learned. I would have learned a lot by doing that by but reading I, it and yeah, yeah, understanding yeah. it. Yeah. Um, but also, I think I told you this before. I did not believe that. I did I, well. It, I was right that they didn't have all the stuff in it. But like the book that came with the TSR eighty, it had you know had basic basic in it. But I didn't believe that it was showing you really how it was done. I thought they were, like, withholding things. <laughs> I just didn't believe it. Right. I thought, oh, they're being very... Um, Tricky. They're just doing the thing that they always do, which is uh, trying to encourage you with something that's simple and, and not confusing you. That's or, what I thought. Right. Uh, and so I didn't... No part of me believed that I had enough information to make a, a program. <laughs> you it's, thought there was more to it than it's really what they're giving you. Yeah. I thought it was, ah. they were hiding a lot. Oh, I made a mistake. It's going to be a big H. Oh, there you go. Oh, there we go. See if you can figure this one out. <laughs> oh, you can't erase. Yeah, uh, it's okay. It, it worked out. It was, it's just a big H. <laughs> Is it considered cheating if I watch you do it? No, because you have to do it backwards. <laughs> There's the challenge. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing that there's a level editor for a 10 line program. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. But Although the thing is, it's like, like that page when it's done no. like that. It's but the thing is, it's like if you made the maps this way, then you need a level editor, and so it's yes. just exposing it to the thing. Like, yeah, it, yeah, but you have to fill, you have to fit it in. I mean, it even as a menu too. Well, like that was the thing when I made the little dumb, you know, dungeon crawler game, right in Java. That I was like, oh, level I was like, oh, I should make a level editor <laughs> because then I will be able to make levels. <laughs> and, yep. then I, and then I realized that that's what all those games that had level editors had done. But yep. they didn't make a level editor for us. They just let us use theirs. Yeah. yeah. And, and <laughs> the same with Draconian for the 2600. Um, Daryl Spice Jr. released the level editor for a level editor contest, but... You have to, like, you could hand code the levels, sure. Yeah, yeah. But if you're making a ton of levels, it's way easier it's way to easier code that. Yeah, yeah. a simple, like that yeah. kind of thing where you just go, do, 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 draw it on the screen. Yeah, it's pretty good. And it has an animated intro. Yes, this game is really, really impressive. 
and and fun. And you, I like it. And yeah. you won too. Hooray! All ten, all ten <laughs> levels. <laughs> Good stuff. It's a Darcy game. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so the next game is... If you really if you really wanted to add one thing to make it hard and make it less Darcy approved, put a timer. Spiky World, yes, there you go. No time to think. Just go. Go, do it. <laughs> so this is by uh, Victor Peretta, who is Vitoko in the chat. Well, I don't know if there were any lines left for a timer. Uh, maybe not. Okay. You died. Oh, there's another S. <laughs> there is another <laughs> S. Another S coin. Funny. So let me read the instructions for Spiky World, if I can find it. Because I didn't post the right link for myself. Spiky World. There oh, we go. So apparently you don't want those green things any more than the blue things. <laughs> you are a bubble in a spiky world. But the other bubbles want to chase you. Guide them to the green spikes. Oh. So you must lure them in to the green spikes. Come on, dum -dums. While avoiding the blue ones and the red ones and the green ones. So you touch nothing, but you got to get them to touch the, the green ones. Not the blue ones, the green ones. Squish. Uh, they can go on angles? Uh, Can I go on an angle? I don't know. That might be a limitation of you. I've seen... <laughs> I read, I read Tower Collections had the uh, <laughs> the same thought I had. Oh, get the green one. Get the green pop. Ooh, oh, <laughs> that's not it. Death to you. Because it does look like a collecting game. It's like, oh, I got to avoid the red balls, and I got to go collect the green things. I mean, no, everything is death to you. They get stuck because they're trying to go in an angle and they're like, I can't get past this. Oh, there you go. Come on, dum dum. Pop yourself. <laughs> Pop. Nice. Uh, so this is, uh, oh, does it say how long this one is? Oh, my goodness. Success! Success. Great oh, there's success. four of them now. Oh, my God. This one is a P-U-R-80. Oh, did I miss what P-U-R stands for? Oh my god. Okay. You're only popping one, remember. I you know. gotta run. Run! Can somebody repost what P-U-R means? Oh no! Oh. Boo, hiss, boo! My turn. <laughs> <laughs> Oh god. Okay. How am I gonna do this guy? I have to get it get him way up here. The 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 difficulty I had was I must have been pushing the joystick in the wrong direction. So I'd be trying to move in a direction one step at a time. I could move fast, oh, fine, but I yeah. couldn't move slow. No, slow it's a little sticky, I find. The movement when you're moving slow. I'm gonna die. Oh, that guy's stuck. Oh, God. Go over. Yeah. Okay. What am I going to do here? Run is what I'm going to do. Run. 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 Okay. I like that they get stuck. <laughs> yes. So you can trap them. Oh, God. No. Oh, no. He's too close. Get on the far uh, side. Uh, yeah. Uh, ah! ah! Into the spikes with you. Fighting the controls. Slow... Um, I think it's because joystick reads are not like <laughs> read every like second. Like I think. Oh, what was I on with? Since you added the compressor, RC70 is asking. Because... No, this is your first compressor show. <laughs> they didn't have to protect themselves from a boo has boo. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Nobody it's has to I've... be on the volume control with a Darcy. Yeah, I wonder. I think I have that problem with my, uh... Your no, show? I don't say that much on my, uh... You're very quiet. On my YouTube channel. 
you're, you're a very different person on your YouTube channel. I know, it's so weird. Like, okay, we're going to uh, work on the motor today. And... No, it's more like... <laughs> Complete silence. Working, working on working, the motor. Working, working, <laughs> working, working, working. And then I'll, occasionally I'll say something, and then I'll be like, oh... <laughs> so there's a certain amount of mumbling going on I, what I should say is there's a certain amount of not mumbling going on <laughs> oh god there's or, so many or I'll be talking not about mumbling. something I'll be talking about something and then go, 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 go. I'll just stop <laughs> just mid sentence just mid, I'll just mid sentence stop and oh, stop. good 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 oh, oh ooh, one took himself go. out like on his own go ah Ah, okay. That was the you made the correct decision in fleeing. Oh yeah, there's too many. Okay, one more done. Oh, I bet one can come over here. Let's go up one. There we go. No! Oh! 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 oh. Run! <laughs> okay, now that I know the here. compressor works, I, I I did it. Oh my goodness! Compressor does work. Neighbor friendly settings. <laughs> <laughs> and this is where I die. Was this maxed out? Oh, they're moving faster now. Oh, they're taking themselves out. Okay, you guys. Come on over here. There's a bunch of spikes. I'm going to get around the top. And we know how much you guys like spikes. Love them. You just go right for them and you're not even, like, worried. You're all cool with them. I think I'll do this one here. Spikes is win. You. Oh, nice. You go up by yourself. Berserk without a gun. Yeah, like in Berserk, you can lead them to like the zappy walls and they're just really dumb. Um, and you just have no way to fire on them. Half based on Berserk. Yes. It does make a lot of sense. Okay, up. Come on, up. No. No. I do like uh, that you can move fast. Yes. That's What's your... weird is that it feels like you like that it feels like that is not, not the type of game that this is no it, it feels like it's not a real time there it feels like uh you have to make the right moves game but it yeah. isn't it's a it's a it's, it's almost a speed game. that it's they have a speed that. and you have a faster speed yep yeah i think i maxed it out oh but the no, reason more no i think i, think I maxed this it is... out i know oh it feels so slow oh uh, because <laughs> there's so many okay this is dangerous very, very dangerous. Pop. I don't think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to try and lead some of them here. Okay, you go there. Okay. Go there. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Somebody come over this here. Is, Not too many. This is, this is okay, because yep. you can run all the way along Whee! the fence. You can run the, the line. Run, along, run the tape. That's it. You run, run along the tape. The tape. Okay. There's a paintball thing. Ah. Okay, I think. I'm pretty Go sure there. it's there. I think that's paintball. Run. That guy'll be stuck. Nice. One left. As long as I don't slam myself into the wall. Okay. It is half based on berserk. I win! Woohoo! Do I? Oh yeah, I do. Alright! You got top score! 2745! Wonder if there's school. you get that by killing all them and not dying. I didn't even read any instructions, but uh, instructions. Yeah, complete five rounds to win and see the score. But are there variations of score depending on how long you take to kill them? I'm guessing, or is that the exact score every time you win five? I don't know. I didn't see a timer. Uh, but That's twenty-seven fun... forty-five is an interesting number. That's a good game. What's That's that? a really good game. What's that? This? This one. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah really. There's been a lot of good games. Time-based score. So it, the faster you do it, the, the more score ah, you get. So you can good. get a, a better score. I mean, it is also randomized, so there's a bit of luck there. Um, good stuff. I count this as a win, though. You, oh, you yeah, are yeah. a bubble with your membrane intact. And around you, arrayed, <laughs> it are like splattered membranes of yep. your enemies, yep. the other children in the playground. <laughs> <laughs> Defeat. Um, you can really feel the joystick reads, though. Like, if you just go click, and you're not on the part where it's reading the joystick, uh, yeah, it yeah. doesn't move. Yeah. Um, but uh, you get used to it. You get used to it. Yeah, yeah. That's it's, which is it's, fine yeah. as long as you can get used to the way a game plays and the yeah. way it. Okay, so next one. Oh, that's not what we want. We don't want ready. 
I gotta do a big reset. Some of these games, you can go back to the menu. <sighs> Some of them you can't. So the next game we're gonna be playing is Zombie Apocalypse Simulator. Now I believe this is a very similar game. See S, S. Ramirez. Bob, bye S. Ramirez. Yeah, this is similar but different. Um, so let me read about this one if you want to play it. So these people are like coming to kill you. Bubbles. Like, yeah. And but they're zombies this time. It's it's only a simulator though, so don't be scared. So you've got to combine those numbers. Those are actually ones, not just little symbols. So you got to push them together and make them two. Uh, story. You play a survivor in a zombie apocalypse. CDCs from around the world have been working on an antivirus, and they have airdropped their parts to a safe location. Your job is to combine the individual work of the CDCs into a final compound and disperse it into the atmosphere to end the zombie plague. Unfortunately, a number of zombies have broken into the safe zone, so you must avoid these while doing your vital work. Vital. Hurry. Vital. Hurry. People are dying every second around the world, and only you can save them. Only I. Uh, gameplay. So Thrust says these joystick reads probably use a frame counter and something like counter and 1F equals 0. Um, uh, uh, Eric, says, Eric says, I gotta go play Spike again, Victor, now that I understand that you have to lure them into the green spikes. It's a good game. You've got a green one, and I think you have to combine them with other green ones. Okay. Once you make a green one, don't push it up against the wall. That's, that's a bad move if you push it up against the wall because you'll never be able to get it out away from the wall again. I mean, you'll be able to push other things into it, but you're getting yourself into a prickly situation there. You control the player that starts at the top of the screen. Use the joystick to walk around and push the crates. When you push two identical crates together, they combine into a new crate. So it's like almost 2048. Combined yeah, that's with, what I was uh, thinking. Combined with uh, kind of the last game a little bit. But it looks like it only goes up to two, and then it starts changing colors, which is yeah. which is fine. Because you're going to hit a limit anyway, like up at... I guess Suck you could go zombies. one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. But I don't know if there's enough to support that anyway. So it's probably better that they use colors, which is more interesting anyway to have colors. The characters remind me of the characters from um, Robotron. Just their, their look and their movements. Oh, at 60 frames per second and, and 1F equals 0 will repeat four times a second. Oh, okay. We're all doomed. Ivory Tower Collections does not have faith in you. Um, neither should they. <laughs> the thing in this game is after a while, they all kind of clump together, which makes them just a big blob, which makes it a little bit easier, right? Orange 2. Speaking of, did you see the Champ Games release the full ROM of Robot Wars, Robot Wars in the Champ Games store? Oh, did they? Oh, very nice. That's very interesting. Because the box copy is not out yet. I mean, they released the... F for sale, right? Not, not for free. I did not see that, so... Missed that one in the news. I didn't see it posted anywhere either. Interesting. I have to look that up. Because the game has been out, but only people that were at that oh, one right. um, that one expo were able to buy the game at this point. Um, when it gets into the Atari Age store, then it's, it's for uh, full public release. But um, that's interesting. So he's, he's practically released the ROM before releasing the boxed copy. So well, But at the same time, pre-sales have happened for a while. So it's not a, a, a exact experiment yet in terms of releasing a ROM and a boxed copy at the same time. Albert's always behind. 
He has a lot to do. He's almost there. He's got the stickers. I think, does he just need manuals now? What does he need? The boxes? I can't remember. I think he's really close. Really close to having everything ready. $20 for the ROM. So it's a little bit cheaper than the cartridge. And no shipping as well. Um, how much is the cartridge for, a, for Robot War? Oh, dangerous. All right, I've got this set up over here. Yeah. So does this work out though? Because that'll make, oh, a two, okay. I thought it changed into the blue one for a yeah, second. I, uh... I was like, oh, this isn't gonna line up well. So as I was playing around with the syncing, so everything should be synced up now, Oops, which oh. is good. Um, so the cat cam is synced up, the audio is synced up to the movement on the screen on the games. Um, gotta lead them away. <laughs> gotta lure them. Come on, guys. Come on. Down here, guys. Over here, dum-dums. Come on. Oh, my nice... brains, my brains are getting tastier. <laughs> Tasty brains. Run! Run! Oh, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, the syncing. Um, so I got all that synced up. It actually took no time at all and I should have done it. Oh, you're going to be fancier, yeah? yeah? Oh no, I thought you were going to like push the two into the... I was gonna, and uh... then I decided that since I screwed it up... Woohoo! 1624! <laughs> There should be some variants in the AI. Yeah, like some of the characters. Oh, move. some are faster and some are slower. They that get would in be each good. other's way. Yeah, they get in each other's way. Some like take different routes. Like in Pac-Man, where they look. Some of them where... move randomly. That's all you need. Yeah. Some move randomly, some follow you. And then you can't Zombies control the them AI. because they will. They'll just be in yeah. your way all the like, time. Like have some They'll of them a... that move, they move randomly. Some of them move randomly if you're not close to them, and others yes. move towards you wherever you are. Or and some then... move faster when you are closer to them, too. Um, like in another game we played recently. Yeah, that would work, too, yeah. Um, oh, uh, Space Pac-Man. That's how it works in the higher levels. When you get close to them, they they kind of randomly move around, oh, but when yeah, you're yeah. close, they go, oh, I see you, and they go yeah, after yeah, you. Yeah. That could be another. But we'll see what happens in uh, the next variation, which is by the same person. And it's the same game, but it's. Super... I mean, I don't know that there's enough uh, space to have any of them move differently or anything. Yeah. I'm not complaining. I'm just like possibly not. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the next game is Super Zombie Apocalypse Simulator, oh. and this is, um, I believe, a 256. So it's. It's gonna work. No, let's get ready. Only ready on the screen. Oh, why do I sit down? So that one was an 80. So that was that that's pretty good for an 80 line. Yeah, that's yeah. Amazing. Yep. So this one's a 120. So we'll see what additions they put into it. I'll read it as well. They could just switch between random and normal. Yeah, that's true. You don't even need to keep track of them then. The reason oh. I was say that's what I first said, but I was thinking like if oh squeaky it would it's help for them to be between random and normal but if they um oh i think you play now <laughs> but if they um you have to read about it ah uh, it moved. if they just move random it's tree then... time yum 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 yum, yum. If it's they just move time. at random, so are we doing uh drugs now? Uh only if there's a little thing to put them in. It, it's actually a uh, player's choice if uh Whoever dinged the bell, Ivory, Ivory Tower, Tower Collection. What do you want? Do you want a high cat or a fat cat? <laughs> neither, neither is actually literally true. It's the funny thing to say. <laughs> oh, there's one up against the wall this time. Oh. Interesting. Well, I might as well do this because it's not getting away from the wall. Actually, that's where it's going to have to end up. Yeah. The whole thing is going to have to yeah. end up there. So this would have to check... Uh, what I was saying is that, like, the random... Here, we're just going to do trees. <laughs> um, the, if you... 
Oh, to open up. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we'll just use the lid. Oh yeah, light. yeah. That's what happened last time. We used the lid. Um, if they're just random, then it, even when they're close, they might not mess Look at with these you. silly guys. They don't know how to get around it. Tee -hee -hee. Hey, buddy. Oh, that's a lot. Oh, it's 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 fine. That is a ton. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Atari's saying. Cool. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Pakoto 8-bit says, push against the wall to turn over. Oh, oh, what that it'll means. flip? Oh, uh, wow, that's nice. Yeah, that is nice. Thank you so much. I did hand you the thing to read. Oh, so I you know the read? differences. differences. You, shouldn't you have checked to see if I can read before you asked me to read? Uh, oh my god, the thing is slower, pushing it. <laughs> <laughs> it would be extra challenging if the zombies had the ability to move your crates. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes! Oh my God! They're rearranging your crates the whole time. That would be. Are they just keep pushing through? Then you. Yeah, that would be interesting. Super Zombie Apocalypse Simulator, a oh, ten-line so game for the 64K Atari 800XL, written by Craig Miller, aka Preppy, aka Retro Homebrew. Category Pure 120. Language Turbo Basic. Turbo Basic. Turbo. It's like basic, but fast. So much faster. Probably is. Story, you play a survivor <laughs> in the zombie apocalypse. CDCs from around the world have been working on an antivirus. That's, and the, they same, have... that's the same story. That's the same story. Because <laughs> you weren't listening last time. Well, I was in the zombie apocalypse. I didn't need to hear the story of what I was living. <laughs> I, I lived it, man. You weren't there. You don't know what it was like. Are those twos or zeds? That'd be uh, cool. Twos. Because it could be Z for zombie. It could be, but it isn't. Uh, could it, should, uh, I, should I trap them in? Uh, you mean like, I have to play the game? I have to do uh, the thing that is the game? Uh, the game is so, so much. Can I just jump to the end? Can I just have <laughs> one already? <laughs> oh, I thought you were going to be clever. No, you weren't. <laughs> I was not clever. <laughs> I was not clever. Ugh. Ugh. Okay. These zombies are so tedious. <laughs> so tedious. <laughs> I'm not even that smart. My where's, brains, they're a bit rotten. I've, I've got prion disease. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing well in this world. Oh, should I line it up so it's all like in order? Uh, it depends. That would be funny. I if, don't know what the depends, order is. Do we want to hear ugh, ugh. even more? <laughs> <laughs> Zombies ah. do not get stuck on diagonals. They don't? Yeah. On oh, this one? On this one. I beg to differ. I saw one that got stuck. All I can tell you is that that is what it says in the chat. That's what the code There. Says. That one in the corner? Look. Oh, now he's moving because I moved out of the way. But he oh. did get stuck in a corner. He doesn't... Uh, he maybe he doesn't get as easily stuck on diagonals. That's true. So let's line this up. Let's get that. Oh, I'm come on. Into the corner. Come on. Do it right. <laughs> did he dump it or did he eat it? All of it. He probably ate it. Oh my goodness. Now he's rolling around in the dust that escaped his face. I'm going to line it up so it's fun. Yeah. Now, which way do I push it from left to right? Correct? Yes. Is this going to work? Uh, if you start over on the ones? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But uh, be careful. Oh, it's so heavy. Come on. Okay. Zombies, get in line. No, they won't do it. Yep. Get in line, everybody. Come on. One more. There we go. Okay. Nope. Come on. Get in order. Okay. Boom. Oh, it didn't work. Oh. No, I don't think you can do that. You can't go boom, yeah. boom, boom. Well, you can if you've got them progressively getting yeah. bigger. You have to know the rules. <laughs> you have to know how, you have to play it a little longer and figure out how they uh, stack. Yes. But it would it would it would compress down really quick. Can I move? Crates are also oh. heavier after they're emerged. Oh, what the hell? It didn't end. <gasps> what do I do now? I need rules. Rule guy, you have to touch the it. rules. You have to touch it? I thought I did. Oh, I don't know. Read the rules. Oh, my score is going down. You control the player that starts at the top of the screen. Use the joystick to walk around and push the crates. When you push two cr identical crates together, it will combine to create a new crate. 
Oh. Once all crates have been combined into the final antivirus, give it one more push to disperse it into the right. atmosphere. Yeah, I did. And then you die. And then it says but caught. you die for a good purpose. And it doesn't have my score. <laughs> Don't worry about the crate getting stuck on the wall. Keep pushing and you flip it around. What you need to worry about are those zombies. Avoid them or block their path with the crate because a single touch means death. Each of the six zones you complete will add to your score. Oh, if you die zones? or complete all six zones, then hold down the fire button oh. to restart your mission and go for better score. Oh, here we go. It's smaller area. Oh. Are there more boxes or faster zombies? Yeah. It does seem like more boxes, but that could be because it's a smaller area. Yeah. Ah! Ah! I'm definitely not going to play all six worlds, because it takes a long time. It is impressive that that's the game there. Unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, it's like small, and it has all these rules in it, and... <laughs> You're not going to be able to read that, but I'm doing it anyways. Here, I'll change it to big. Oh, go back up. Oh, this camera won't be able to focus on Where am I? Hand. Oh, I died. Dead. So that, just unblur it with your, <laughs> with your mind. With your brains. With your brains. Just un... Which mine got eaten because uh, I looked away. But I wasn't going to play the whole game anyway. We can't see the game! I died. I, I, <laughs> you didn't want to see that. Because I did complete a level. It's just, it's the same thing over and over. That is uh, really the, did cool. you hear? Did you hear what he said? He died because he already completed it, and it's the same thing over and over. That's right. I've, therefore, he died. Yeah, all the levels are exactly the same. <laughs> it seems like the same number, and it's just that it was smaller, so it's yeah. more compressed. And it looked like they were going about the same speed, too. So you just have less room to move. I feel like they move a little quicker in Super Zombie Apocalypse. Yes. They but do. not, like, too quickly or anything. No. Just that... Quick enough that it's it's a, a minor annoyance that you have to like keep moving. So really, you know what? You should just like do this. Push them all against the wall. Just push them all to the left. And combine them as like as you get them. It's like, oh that one's kinda close, I'll just push them all over. Then you can just do this kind of thing. Oh, that doesn't quite work. <laughs> oh, I can, you can hide. Watch this. Uh, yeah, but they can move on an angle, so be careful. I'm going to make a little fortress here. Mm -hmm. Fortress of solitude. Yeah, so I can contemplate. Oh, the screensaver kicked in. Oh. Why? Why does it not know that I'm doing things? Okay, that's big enough for a fortress. Oh, maybe not. I'll, I'll completely protect myself against diagonal zombies. You can't get me, zombies, <laughs> zombies. Somebody isn't resetting the attract. <laughs> ah. Next game is super duper what does zombie that mean, apocalypse. Resetting the attract? Uh, this is the attract mode, so it doesn't burn in the screen. Uh -huh. um, I guess that's built into the basic, and there's uh -huh. a command to turn on or off the attract mode. Uh -huh. And obviously, you want to turn it off. Or reset when you're playing. it when you're playing. Yeah. And it's not reading, like going, oh, I've pressed a button, therefore don't turn on the attract mode. Press the spacebar key. What does that do? Oh. Uh, there we go. So there you go. So it's not reading a joystick move as cancel the attract mode. Anyway, very cool. I like the zombie game. It's oh, yeah. I see the score is going down. So yeah. Reset. No. What do we got next? Nobody knows. Nobody knows except my tablet. Let's see what's left. Can you press enter for me? Return, you mean? Return on the Atari. Is it enter? Or is it ret it's return on the C64 too. Yeah, it is. Yeah. What are you doing? Nobody knows. You're, 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 you're teasing the cat. Sorry, buddy. Sometimes um, we get teased. Next one is called Tune Up by Michael Radecki, also known as Agenda and String. Oh, now he's all, he's all upset now. Yeah, there are disappointments in life, and this is just another one. You'll die when the score reaches zero, maybe. Or you just get a zero score. I don't know. We didn't let it go down. 
Okay, this one I have to read the instructions for. I did not. Well, get. It, when the when the uh, score reaches zero, then like you lose all your presence on social media. And nobody <laughs> cares that you're saving the world anymore. That's right. It's just not interesting for yeah. anyone. So this is a P U R A T uh, story. The notes have fallen out of the sheet music, and the great pianist can't play the etude. You are the green note that has to strike the twenty lost blue notes scattered on the music staff. You have to do it in as many few moves as possible so th that the impatient audience can listen to the great pianist's etude as soon as possible. How to play. You move the green note around the play field, music staff, using the joystick port one. You can move left and right across the edges of the board, but you cannot move beyond the top and bottom. There are five stages in the game. In each of them, you have to strike four notes, and you should do it in as few moves as possible. You can only strike a note half... You can only strike a note... Half note, quarter note, eighth note, sixteenth, when you have taken the shape of the note you want to strike. But I've, I'm that shape and I still can't You can change yourself into different notes by moving around the board. After level at five, game ends and player How must... How do you strike a note? Oh, I don't know that yet. Oh. Um, to level five, the game ends, you must type run and return to restart the game. Each move by one field is a change symbol. Strike is possible from each side. Top to bottom, right to left, and so on. And at the end of the game, the score is given. It's not It's not working, is it? Because you are that note. So it's broken. And you're, no, that, you're that note too. Yeah, I tried them all. You're not, you're that note? No, you're not that note. Maybe the button? Strike? No. Hmm. Hmm. Do you have to put it on your head? Yep. That's how you do it. Goes in the head. I don't. Here, you try. You have to strike them from a far position. More than one strike. Oh. Oh. Okay, let's try that. How do you strike them? I don't know. It just said strike them by moving into them from the left or right. But I can't. As soon as I move towards it, it changes. Hmm. Oh! It worked. What did you do? No idea. Oh. Oh. What? What? Okay. Oh, I know what it is. You have to move into them as not the right note, and then what? And then what you? So you need to be one step from it. So you have to memorize the order and step into them. Where when you move into, because every time you move, you change your note. Yeah. You have to be such that when you move, you will become that note. That's okay. how. Okay. See? Well, the problem is you just move back and forth and it's and it just changes constantly. So eventually you'll get there. Or maybe I not. feel that you uh, are... How about this? Okay. No, no. You need to know when, when does the quarter note uh, show up? What's it after? Oh, does so it it's, just... It's in keep... order. Oh, so half note. Now the next one's quarter, quarter note. Yeah. Eighth, sixteenth. Yeah, eighth. Sorry, eighth note. Yeah. So okay, you half, need to be oh, you need to be a quarter okay. note when you're beside it, so that when you move into it, it becomes sixteenth. Do you mind? Don't bite. He doesn't mind at all. No, see, you had it right there. You but need I just to be moved. a quarter note. Now move into it. What? Do you? How do you? I ne I never moved into any of the notes. I went beside them. Yes, and then there. moved. No, I didn't touch the note. I just moved to beside it. Hmm. Maybe I need to loop around the screen. Because it needs to, like, almost reset itself. So I just moved one, and I was beside it. Eh, interesting. See, it, it, I was that note. Hmm. So you have to be... I don't think I can move down. I have to move towards it. Like, if I do this over and over again, it'll never work. But if I do this, it will work. This won't work, but this will. But I have to be the right note. See, I'm one off right now. Does that help? Moving, like, in a circle like that? I don't think it does. Because really, it's odd or even. 
And you have to change the odd by looping around the screen, I think does it. Let's see. Yep, it does. Okay. If this doesn't work, you loop around the screen and do it again, and it'll offset it by one. Um, so what you do is you go around to all these notes, <laughs> and if you're off by one, you just move around the screen, and then you'll get it. I figured out the game. Less is better. Okay, so let's do it again. So that is the right timing. Up, down, up, down. Obviously that's the beginning level. That's wrong. No. Oh, so it is a puzzle, but it's very hard to know how many spaces you are away from it. But I get it now. I don't get how to play it, but I get it. <laughs> no, I gotta go around. See, now it's lined up. Anyway, okay, yep, got it. <laughs> Understand. Understand the game. Uh, I don't know if you want to play it. Nope. Nope. Okay. So I saw. I saw it. Yep. We understand. Um, interesting. Interesting game. Next one's called Chickens on the Freeway, which is where they're not supposed to be. Oh, doesn't. Those chickens better get off the freeway. And I wonder if anyone can guess what this game is a port of. Um, it's actually a very good port of it. Chickens on the freeway in NTSC land. It's by Victor Prada, Vitoko. Um, is it Chickener? Is it based <laughs> a port of Chickener? That's right. It's a port of Chickener by Slack Division. Uh, I think one of them. There you go. You are the chicken. You got to get across the road. It's not Frogger. <laughs> but it plays very different than Frogger. Uh, guide the chicken to the other side of the freeway. Use the joystick to move up or down, avoiding the cars. Oh, how long? How big was this one? Uh, 120. 120? Okay. Uh, you score each time a chicken arrives at the top. Uh-oh. The game only lasts two minutes and a few seconds. The winner is the player with the highest score. So, super fun game. In other words, me! Run, chickens, run! I don't know, you only have a three-point oh. advantage. And you're getting run over. Oh, so am I. Ah. And, and there's a delay after you stop being knocked. Yes. Butt over tea kettle. He has to... Uh, Chicken butt over... Rearrange himself. Oh, God. I'm doing very poorly. Why am I doing so poorly when I was doing better when oh. it wasn't on the show? Oh, you're a stinky cat. Yes, I sensed a presence that I've not <laughs> sensed since. <laughs> since last time. Oh, oh my god, cat. That is terrible. Oh, goodness. Badness, I mean. Certainly badness. Oh. Oh, no. Chicken, what are you doing? Don't you know the joke? <laughs> Don't get squished, chicken. Like, this is a, an extremely faithful uh, recreation of Freeway. I don't know what Freeway is. It's the it's this game that it was ported from. Uh, made by Activision for the 2600. Was it made for any other systems, Freeway? Or was it just on the 2600? Kicking my ass. You had a bit of a head start. 11 to 7. Yeah, but only three, and I beat you by four, so therefore I won legitimately. This preceded Frogger? 
did it? No. Can anybody confirm that? Well, this looks almost exactly like the 2600 game. It is so close. It doesn't have the variations like the big trucks and um, and the cars speeding up and slowing down. This is just constant. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, but no more cap for him. Cap net for him. Nope. Okay, let's do it again. Okay, go. So you had an advantage last time. Did I? Because I was talking. Dun dun. Ah, oh, no! Run, chicken! No! Oh, it keeps getting hit. Nope, 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 nope. There we go. I don't know if the cars change speed at all on this. I'm not sure. Oh, I almost got hit by the slow car. That would have been embarrassing. <laughs> you beat me. Rumors of my having gotten a <laughs> free advantage were exaggerated, that's why. <laughs> no advantage gotten. It's all skill. It's, it's tote skill. Oh I totally, I totally intended to be run over by that car car. <laughs> go, go, go. Oh, no. No! Chicken, go! No! Oh! That hurt my butt. Chicken butt. Guess what? Gave my chicken a BM. <laughs> no! Almost. No! Ah, Darcy's legitimately kicking my ass! Kicking your chicken, uh... Chicken butt. Chicken butt. All over the pavement. Oh, I hit the slow car. Shame. So much shame. Much shame. Oh, I hit the slow car, too. You should try for the freeway patch. You're doing really good. Woo! Nice! Both games, 1981, developed independently. Wow. Last year was presented uh, another 10-line port for MSX. Uh, it doesn't look like this got a C64 port back in the day, unlike a lot of other Activision 2600 games, so I guess it, this never got an official port. Just the 2600. Ah. Uh... Need a version of Blood Human Highway now. That might need 12 lines. <laughs> this is a very faithful recreation of Freeway. Super fun. And another two-player game. Always yeah, yeah, good. it's bonus, yeah. So good uh, job, Vitoko, on that one. Uh, this might be the little, uh, That's the last game, actually. Good stuff. We succeeded. In getting through all <clears throat> the games. Um... Yeah, good stuff. So you, uh, you finished your boat, I've heard. Yes, I, I have an electric boat now. It's electric. Yep. It electric. Turn it on. Yep. It makes no engine noise. Which is a much bigger deal than you think. Like, that's one of the big bonuses of making an electric. It's when it's, it's not, quiet. like, you... could be stealthy. You, Stealth boat. You go to turn it on, and it's it's like... Will it start today? <laughs> Let's see. Half the time starts right away. The other half, you got to sweat it for a while as you, uh, yeah. Yeah. And this just, you go click, it goes click, and you go vroom, and you're vrooming. Uh, are there retail electric boats now that you can uh, there's, buy? You can buy. Or there kits? There's a new power oh. boat that's out, and it uses, uh, what do you call it, uh, hydrofoils. Yeah. Which it's like returning hydrofoils to boating because you need to be like with a, a gas powered boat. You don't really you can spend the gas to get range, yeah. even though it's expensive. You can spend it. Whereas with uh, elect electric boat, you need to 
you need to be as efficient as you can because they yeah. don't have as much range. No. So I bet there's going to be gas versions of boats that are uh, that use the hydrofoils. The same, why not use the same hydrofoil system? In a, uh, it would it efficiency would, is efficient. It would make it way more efficient. Yeah. And I think this one I can't remember what it's called. It's from it's from Europe somewhere. Uh, I can't remember where. And it can go something like I can't remember if it's thirty or fifty miles, and it like that's pretty good. Maybe it's. Th it would be 30 or 50 kilometers. I don't know. Because it's uh, boats, it could be nautical miles. <laughs> it could be anything. Anyways, whatever it is, whether it's kilometers or miles, it's impressive. And it can go something like 50 kilometers an hour or something like that. And, it, and yeah, it means that you can have a fast on the boat on the on the water vehicle that's electric. It, yeah. It's pretty awesome. And you can switch to anything at any time. Turn on the electric motor. Turn on the gas motor. Oh, with put mine? Up the sails. Yeah, you have yeah. Three and I have modes of transportation. So I have the electric motor, which would get. It seems like it'll get me. Um, without going too slow, it'll get me about fifteen to eighteen knot, nautical miles, which is like thirty kilometers, something like that. I think I've asked you before. Why nautical miles? It was just developed independently, like so. I, I don't know why nautical miles... A mile is a mile. It's a measure of distance. It's not but measuring the reason, up and over the waves or anything. The reason to... I don't know why they're different measurements, but the reason you call them knots, even if they would call them knots, even if they weren't, is that your speed on water is not the same as your speed on land because, like an airplane... Yeah. That's why airplanes, I think they use knots as well. Do they? Uh, and it's... It's for a similar yeah, reason, do. because your speed right. through the air is not your speed above ground, because if the wind is coming at you, or in the ocean, if the current and the wind are moving sure. against you, you, no, it's a huge deal. Yeah. If the current is going this way, you can be going five knots, but you're actually not traveling five knots. And it's, it's an you important... You still have to account for that at some point. Right, but, but knowing that you're talking about... You, when you say you're moving X knots, you're talking about your speed through the water. Right. Yeah. It's relative to the water. Yeah. And relative, and relative to, to the, the air. air. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll give you that. <laughs> Makes sense. Yeah. I, I'm I'm only partly sure that that's the uh, reason. There's probably... Uh, so. Which, there's at least more to it. And I might be just wrong. But I think that that's part of it. Which game did you enjoy the most today? Hmm. I like the zombies ones. And I like the conveyor belt one. Uh, actually, I liked a lot of them. Yeah. yeah I like the bubble popping one. Yep. Conveyor. Oh, it actually, that yeah, one was very All innovative. the ones I can think of that I liked, yeah. Yeah, they're all really good. The note one uh, needed a bit something else. I don't know I didn't what it get needed. the control. I didn't get how... Like, it's a, it's a puzzle game, and I like puzzle games, and I think that there's there's more to it than I... I'm missing something. It's it's the puzzle aspect that we're not getting. Yeah, yeah. And it, because you need to do it in le least amount of moves possible. Um, but I just... I couldn't count it out. I, like, you have to know how many spaces, and that's a little difficult, because they're not... There's no lines, vertical I, I, lines. I wasn't quite clear on, like, the rules of it yet. I mean, eventually I understood yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I bet there's a way to, like, always get them. Like, go this way, you get that one, go this way, then this way, then this way, and you solve each puzzle. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. MetroSync, that was the conveyor think, belty one. Yeah, one that, of the most innovative I one, was, I think, was MetroSync. I think because, I would say that was... Because I mean, if original. I had to pick one, I'd pick that, but I liked a lot of them. Yeah. yeah. Um, the Qbert one was very... Very good for the small size. Yeah, yeah. Like, really good for the small size. Yep. Um, looking at the picture here. Because there's chat over top of it. Um, also, like, the drawing, the, the connecting the dots one. That, yep. that was fun. Like, they're all good. Like, yeah. they, there weren't any stinkers in there at all. Yeah. Uh, the freeway was am amazing. Like, two players. Um, the Invaser one where you're shooting up, that was a lot of fun because it got really hard quick. Thrust says MetroSync, which I, if I would have guessed which one, I, I would have thought he would like that one because he likes innovative programming. Yeah. And that one was very innovative. Yeah, the Accuracy of the Freeway clone was impressive. And Al says he liked the zombie ones. Yeah. The zombie one was cool because it's two games in one, almost. Like, you have to combine boxes. 
And there's games where you oh, just I, do that. I, I really like the zombie one. I like the fact that yeah. you were... It's a zombie game and you're not killing the zombies. You're just, just trying to work around in your them. way. <laughs> yeah, like they're like... And the bubble you. popping one was cool too because you have to think about, okay, I have to lead him there. Yeah. Plus, you're running away from and you have to like prepare for like what comes next. Yeah, Yeah. they're all very, very clever. Yeah, really, really. And like the only like it, the reason that I wasn't able to play those well is just it took me longer to get used to the the timing on the joystick. But that was true with all of them. Yes. And that's and the reason is obvious, and it's not a complaint. It's just a, a function of because there's no there's space. no room there's no to room to like sort that out finesse the yeah. joystick and, movements. And yeah. more importantly, there is room for you. It is something that you can um, gain skill at, Get right? Used so it's to. it's not a problem. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. You never want to be fighting the controls, but as long as you can get used to it, because every game is different, and every yeah. game how you move is different. So as long as you can get used to the controls, then you're fine. I, I changed the middle dotted line yellow into a straight one on purpose. I'm guessing uh, he's talking about freeway. Because uh, dotted on a freeway with six lanes on each side, you you don't have a dotted yellow line. There is no passing on this freeway. You will die if you try um, and pass on if, the freeway. Then how is the chicken legally crossing the road? <laughs> he's not he's definitely not legally crossing it okay easier to write one character across the screen yeah that too that would take less programming okay so thanks for hanging out with us uh actually let's um see what's coming up on the show and we have some things we're going to be playing After Dark. We're going to be doing an After Dark this weekend, probably. Could be maybe even tonight. I don't know. Or tomorrow night. We're going to be playing Tober's Nightmare and Turbo Arcade, part of the 2022 Harmony Games around one, because that's running out. Uh, the fourth is the last day for that. Uh, we're going to be playing Razor's Edge, uh, exclusive world premiere. Um, we have another exclusive world premiere as well. Um, that I have not put in here. Got an 8-bit day that I bumped. Um, we were going to play that today, a whole bunch of 8-bit games, but there was these coming up. Much more interesting gaming than I expected. Yeah, really innovative today. Because mm-hmm. um, usually they're like really, really simple games, but really did well. Um, some undated things coming up. Atari Age Day 2022, where we have live unboxing of all the games. And we'll be talking to all the developers. I've also bought a Jaguar to play the Jaguar games. Don't be be biting. Um, For that day. Um, And I also have some other Jaguar games, homebrew games from before last Atari Age Days. We'll be playing that on an upcoming show as well. So I think we have 16 games for Atari Age Day being released. So we'll be talking with 16 developers, or at least reading things out. Let's see. Oh, I might extend the deadline for round one Harmony Games to get more people to play. Okay, cool. Uh, We'll play it this weekend anyway. Jags are an investment. Yes. (laughs) It was not cheap. That's why I held off. Like, I put an ad in the Atari Age forums in the wanted section. Nobody responded. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure at this point, everybody who has... That doesn't doesn't actually seem like a very good place to find one, honestly. Unless it's like, (laughs) if you know, if they might see one available and tell you... But no one actually had one to sell you. No, nobody had one to sell me. And it was up there for like two months. And because people who have them don't want to get rid of them. It's like, I want to keep my jack. Yeah. Um, So I had to buy one from eBay. What Um, was the one that I saw in Victoria? It had a printer. Oh, it was a Coleco Atom. Ah, I actually it? Oh, owned okay. an Atom mm-hmm. at one point, but it's it was huge. Yeah, it's, it was it's lost, unwieldy, it's lost, and yeah. I don't I didn't care about it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I don't remember selling it. I might have thrown it away. I don't think so, though. I must have given it to somebody. Um, but it, it was it came with a printer. It doesn't seem likely that I, you would throw it away. Like that doesn't seem no, very James. I doubt I'd throw it away. That'd be very silly, silly, silly. It just would be out of character. Because I got rid of a bunch of 1702 monitors at the same time. I must have listed them somewhere. But this was in like 
90, uh, 2006. So I wouldn't have thrown that away at that point. I actually saw the highest price for a loose Jaguar ever back in 1995. Ooh, how much was that? Because right now they go for about th three, like US, 350 to 450, depending. Loose. Mm -hmm. With like controllers and a and the plug and the RF cable. What is not what is not loose? Like in a box? Yeah, either in a yeah, in a box, pretty much. So like And boxed ones go for a lot more. Yeah. Like that would be like 500 and up for the box. And I could build a jack for less than that. Um, and then there's the CD add-on. If you get one with a CD and a jag in a box, it's like $1,000 US. They are one of the most expensive systems. I think the only other one that's more expensive is the Neo Geo. Uh, what would be more expensive than a Neo Geo? That's That's was legitimately put out in somewhat big numbers like neo geo was like a known thing i think that's probably the most expensive system right now neo geo is top of the line i saw links on ebay go for like 300 yeah halcyon don't know what that is we need to know common ones common ones uh anyway so i've got a, a jaguar now so i've got every system except for the atari links which is the handheld all the atari systems not the variations of the Atari systems, but yeah. Uh, so thanks for hanging out with us. Ivory Tower Collections, Danny VC, Phaser Cat Games, Vitoko. Thanks for making those awesome games we played today. Thrust, Al Nefer, or, in, or Don Ekro. Is that the name I always mess up? Or Don Ekro. The name you always mess Can up? Can you smell bleach? It smells like a pool. I think some. Oh, you know what? Today is cleaning day outside. Is clean. that what all that noise is? Yeah, it's a noise and the terrible bleachy smell. We're gonna have to open the windows. Kittens, don't be, don't be injured by the, by the smell. Uh, Eric uh, Henneke, thanks also for your game. Smitty B seventy eight hundred. Who else? Who else is in this list? Same people, same people, over and over. Oh, yep. Uh, I think I got everyone that is on the screen. Oh, Splendid Dot, there you go. Got you in there. Um, oh, yeah. Also, we're going to be playing Dark Keep soon. Uh, INV for the 2600 High Score Showdown Season 6, uh, which I've never played on the show, I don't think. So that's a good, that's a uh, homebrew. Uh, so sometimes they throw in homebrews for the high score showdown. Uh, Champ Game Secret Homebrew in one month. Because now it's April. I was trying to think of things to do for April Fools today, but I left it too late and everything I think could think of would be too distressing for people mm. <laughs> to hear. So I'm like, mm, I won't do that. Uh, we also have a live interview with Old Style, plus the Mario Brothers exclusive final version of that for the 7800, plus an awesome new homebrew that he's working on. You're going to love it. And maybe even another one he might reveal that. I don't know. It depends on him. Uh, developer Spotlight and Todd Formatsky when he's got Harpy's Curse ready for the exclusive world premiere. So we'll be going through all his games. And ZPH the game eventually. I really need to get that done uh get the manual done actually not the manual because i don't think al prints manuals i can just print the manual uh, i need to get the label done so i just work on the label first send it off to al he can make the cartridges send it to me and then i can work on the ma uh, manual in the meantime atari's waiting for the ding is there one more cd32 goes for about 400 so it's up there that's up there there's much less dynamic in the show today. Thanks for that. <laughs> dynamic in the in the sound. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think we've I think we've got it down. It, it's working right now. <laughs> um, and a whole bunch of other stuff. Oh, Atari 2600 45th birthday marathon. Do you think I'm talking about you every time I say Atari? Yes, that's okay. Um, and I've got all the data now for that because we're going to be playing hundreds and hundreds of games over weeks. Uh, yeah, 
that's what's coming up. Uh, so thanks for hanging out with us. Have a good weekend. We're probably going to do an After Dark tonight or tomorrow, playing a couple games. And uh, we will see you back here on Tuesday for we don't know what. It could be anything. It could be a 7800 day. It could be most likely a 2600 day. Or it could be some old homebrews that I've never played on the show before. Uh, which would probably be 7800 because I've pretty much exhausted all the 2600 <laughs> games that are uh, not, uh, what is that game? Tinker Nut. It was the example program built into Batari Basic, where it's like you're at the bottom, there's a thing that comes from the top and goes directly for you, and you have a bullet. And that's it. So And you still haven't played it, even though it came as the example game for Batari? No, I haven't played it because there's nothing to it. That's the game. And people I mean that sounds like someone who hasn't played hasn't played it might say and doesn't know what they're talking Maybe about. Maybe we should do just a Tinker Nut day. Yeah. Well, I do... don't know about a whole day, but sure, yeah. <laughs> all the 500 variations of Tinker Nut. Well, yeah. people just changed the graphics. That's all they did on mostly most of it because they're playing around with it, right? They're like, "Oh, I'll change it to a cat or a bee coming down and I am a cool ship at the bottom." It's like, "Well, that's cool okay. for your first thing, but it's not it's not much of a game. It's exactly the same gameplay as Tinker Nut. So Tinker Nut will never see the light of day on this show. Never. No Tinker Nuts. Uh, I don't. Know, I don't know if I approve of that uh, closed-minded attitude. But it's weird remembering that people were sick of Batari Basic games at one point. It was kind of when I started the show, where people were like, uh, "There's a lot of crappy Batari Basic games coming out." Now there's like zero, like zero b bad Batari Basic games. Oh, they're still Batari Basic, just not. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. But people are really, really pushing Batari Basic to the, like the limits. Like most games we play in the show on twenty six hundred are made with Batari Basic. Very few are uh, um, assembly, hmm. and uh, people seem to put a lot more effort into it. Maybe because they see what can be done with Batari Basic now, and and they just are able to push the limits more. So have a good weekend, everyone. Uh, and we will see you back on Tuesday. And Darcy will see you in two weeks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.